Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm from Mapillary. And today I'm going to talk to you about enhancing maps with Mapillary. Uh, you can see in the background image on the screen uh, an example of what our computer vision does with street level imagery. We use artificial coloring here just to highlight the differences between things like crosswalks, stoplights, vehicles, humans, buildings. And this is something we do with all the photos that we have uh, currently on our platform, contributed from users just like you. And one of the basic tenets of Mapillary is that we empower OpenStreetMap users to do more mapping on a larger scale, uh, as well as with more detail and quality. So the images that you contribute, uh, they allow you to very quickly survey an area and then from the armchair, go ahead and map in far more detail without having to manually walk the streets and clock in every detail you're seeing there. And also share your imagery with people across the world who can use it uh, to contribute to mapping in your area. And finally, you can use other people's imagery from across the world to uh, help with other tasks, including things like hot OSM and missing maps, uh, as well as just specific projects for different uh, organizations and causes. So a little more background about Mapillary if you're not uh, familiar with it. We are a collaborative street-level imagery platform powered by computer vision. Uh, so breaking down that mouthful, what we do is we take imagery from our contributors and most importantly, besides providing that imagery as street-level imagery, uh, is we actually turn it into map data. So we analyze the photos, identify what's in the photos, and then we place that using the geotag uh, to show you where photos containing different objects are. And then we, uh, we work on actually triangulating the location of objects in the photos to produce uh, more accurate geographic data. So we have iOS and Android applications that enable anyone to download Mapillary and start mapping right away. We have integrations with the ID and JOSM editors as well as diverse integrations across other geospatial platforms. So here in this map, you can see our coverage across the US, uh, as well as Canada and a slice of Mexico there. We're device agnostic, uh, meaning more specifically that we take all kinds of cameras, and all kinds of images, as long as they're geotagged and have timestamps. So you can see here GoPros, uh, a Ricoh camera, mobile phones, Garmin, uh, even going as so far as to mount a 360 camera on a bicycle helmet as well as a forward-facing uh, mobile phone to make sure you get everything. You can upload these directly from your mobile phone. You can upload them through our website uh, as well as Python scripts. And in the future, we'll have a more comprehensive desktop uploading platform. These photos belong to you when they go on to Mapillary. The license is CC by SA. And you can also now start tagging these photos, whether it's the entire photo, just marking it as a category that matches an OSM tag, or tagging pieces of those photos as something on OSM tags. And we know that it's a challenge uh, making maps accurate, as well as deciding what kind of detail to show at what level. So here you can see uh, Boulder, Colorado on different mapping platforms. And you can see that obviously OpenStreetMap has a greater amount of detail than any of the others. And much of this is due to the way that contributors put so much time and effort into making sure that detail is there. So what Mapillary offers is another level of detail that's possible. Uh, it also allows for ground-based evidence. So there's often friction trying to uh, take OpenStreetMap data and really prove that it's authoritative prove that it's as good as government data, and that now the average open street mapper has also some credentials and can contribute to an official map of the world rather than just gatekeepers such as government and big businesses. So with Mapillary, your tool set is expanded. And taking a deeper look here, we can see in the screenshots, um, on top you see my hometown, Billings, Montana. And I put quite a few Mapillary images up in the center there. And now on our website, you're able to see our computer vision detections. So I filtered for crosswalks. And you can see the location of photos containing crosswalks. 
supporting this in the near future into the OpenStreetMap ID editor, you'll be able to have suggestions on what to map and where. So I'll take you to Santa Monica, California, just briefly. This is uh, from OpenStreetMap, roads layer, just showing what Santa Monica looks like with uh, no other detail added. And then we can do what we call uh, going out to Mapillary it. Capture the images and put them online on Mapillary. So you have the green lines indicating where coverage now exists. And like one of the users here, you might take a, a walk along the, the beach. Uh, I think this is actually a bike ride along the bicycle lanes there. And what we're able to provide, uh, for example, is we pinpoint where the street signs are located and classify what type they are. We even tell you the difference between a 35 mile an hour speed limit sign and 45 miles an hour. You can also click on these street signs on our website and we'll show you which images we identified them in, such as the stop sign here, uh, and give you a more close up look at that so you can confirm that it's correct. This is then available in OpenStreetMap editors. Uh, from here you'll see OpenStreetMap ID editor and all these street signs are overlaid as well as mapillary coverage uh, on OpenStreetMap allowing you to use that as reference. So for example, you can find bicycle lane signs, um, share the road signs, any of these that indicate where bicycle lanes exist and use that to aid you in mapping that route. So worldwide we have uh, as of about 30 minutes ago, 207 million photos. And also 30 minutes ago, we hit uh, 100 million photos just this year. So over half of what we have uh, has really grown in the past 12 months. And we expect to see that keep growing. And be because of this, the, the networking effects of this are that all this data, all this imagery overlaps, it combines, and it just makes it more useful for everyone, the more that people contribute. Some examples of around the world of how uh, larger groups have contributed to this uh, publicly available data and imagery. Uh, Lithuania, the transport authority there, just donated over 25,000 kilometers of road imagery, mainly on highways. They use this uh, internally for the government and the intention is to make it available for all their citizens as well. In Australia, uh, Vic Roads, which is a transportation agency in the state of Victoria in Australia. They take an annual survey of over 22,000 kilometers um, of photos along their arterial roads. And each year they're planning to continue uploading these onto Mapillary as well. Uh, very importantly, this allows comparing photos over time, uh, which is a feature we also offer on our website and are looking to put into more integrations. Uh, in the Netherlands, the city of Amsterdam captured their own street level imagery of the entire city, uh, over 800,000 uh, high definition panorama photos in 360. So we now have these all available on OSM ID and JOSM editors for you to use with mapping. And we also were able to pull data from these that again in the future we're going to add onto OpenStreetMap ID editor to suggest what kind of objects you'd want to map and where. Uh, just this fall in Canada, uh, Bike Ottawa organization, who's here, did a great job. Uh, a very great show of uh, community activism. They uploaded about a quarter of a million photos over about a one month period. And much of this was targeting bikes, uh, bicycle infrastructure. And it's gonna support ongoing projects in 2018 for uh, just making I Ottawa more bicycle friendly as well as having better data and maps that are, that are useful for cyclists. And again, this is all available on OpenStreetMap and will aid an uh, upcoming mapathon that's going to take these photos and transform them into uh, quality map data. Finally, in the US, uh, Microsoft recently donated about two million images from their street side data set. And these were in support of disaster recovery in Florida and Texas. And so we have extremely dense coverage now that's again available specifically on OpenStreetMap in support of users who are doing uh, disaster recovery mapping. And this is all pre-disaster imagery. So many users are able to contribute post-disaster imagery and now see the change over time as far as uh, what's there, what's gone, what's changed, 
and in the future we'll also be able to see rebuilding and other important changes. So with Mapillary itself, we're going to go over some more specific new upcoming features. The first I want to talk about is placement tools. What we're doing here is we've actually taken every pixel of the images submitted and we attempt to match these up with geographic coordinates. So we've currently developed this tool that exists allowing you to click in the photo, you place a marker, this marker appears in the photo uh, on street lamps as you see here, and it also appears on the map where it should be relative to the observer location in the photo. So this is something also upcoming in the ID editor. I specifically want to thank Brian at Mapbox for past, present, and future work with this and making it possible. And this is something that will save many people from a time-old problem. Um, going back to days before Mapillary even, where people have been using Google Street View alongside GIS tools as a reference, but constantly looking back and forth between images and the map and trying to eyeball where to place things. Uh, this entirely erases that problem and allows you to work much more quickly, more precisely, and just without the stress level that that can bring. So our intelligent detections, as I mentioned, uh, you can see these on our website now by turning on the AI detection setting. Here we're in Portland, Oregon, and I'm specifically looking at crosswalks again here. So we're able to pull up this photograph, we're able to see the color coding we've placed, and we outline the crosswalk locations. So porting this into uh, ID Editor in the future as well, combined with the previous slide of placement tools, it will take you probably less than five seconds to add a single crosswalk onto the OpenStreetMap. And most importantly, it is validated with geotag photo evidence. So it's, it's very easy to know exactly what you're mapping, uh, as well as have very little struggle putting that on the map. We also have a new feature as of this month. It's called tagging. And very simply, you can tag an entire photo. Um, this one we could tag as park. Or you can see uh, specifically in here, I'm tagging the trash can. And I'm next able to tag the bridge here. And this, uh, this works in multiple ways to, to improve everyone's experience. One, we match these tags up with many OSM tags. So it makes it very easy for you to do this tagging on your own, just keeping in mind what you then want to add to OpenStreetMap. This also uh, is stored in a database that uh, forms training data for us, for our computer vision algorithms to better learn uh, what it is that's in the images. And eventually, we'd like to allow you to put in custom tags that may support very specific uh, activities and missions that you're working on. Um, even if you're tagging boulders, as you see in this photo, uh, or something else extremely specific to your region, it's something we want to enable you to do and then enable you to benefit from computer vision uh, receiving automatic detections and suggestions from. And finally, just a quick look at what we're doing behind the scenes. We form a point cloud from images by max, uh, matching pixels. And here we're, uh, in the longer term, looking to pinpoint all objects in the photo on the map. So here you can see trash cans, you can see manholes, you can see the color coding that we're doing on these 3D models. And all of this ties back into just locating what's in your images with very little effort from you besides on the ground mapping to support building a better map. Uh, some other mentions here is uh, we have a plugin coming for QGIS 3.0, so it will enable a lot of the same editing uh, on that platform. Uh, we integrated with uh, Osmond Android application, so you can see uh, point of interest images based on Mapillary being present there, uh, as well as just see the Mapillary coverage in your area and use this to uh, aid you when you're out mapping to already see where coverage exists and fill in the gaps. So overall, the idea with Mapillary and OpenStreetMap is to promote a smarter method of, of mapping. What's most important that we offer for the community isn't just the photos and the applications to capture those, but the tools to turn it into something meaningful, uh, as well as to allow communities to have on-the-ground efforts that actually support detailed mapping. We use machine learning, but this is not replacing the on-the-ground efforts of, of the communities. 
Uh, it instead enables communities to go out collaboratively to take photos. It requires uh, community presence and then share that for the community at large worldwide to then even uh, form even greater collaboration on adding detail to the map. And we also have an open source viewer. We call this Mapillary.js. It is a basic JavaScript uh, library that has probably about 12 lines of code, I think, is the most basic way to insert that into any of your web projects. And this allows you to view your own images as well as those by others. Again, CC by SA. And we encourage people to make use of that and use this in your projects across the board. So overall, I want to thank our community for taking great images such as these you see up here. This is what's made it all possible for us to grow at such a great rate. And it makes it really possible for us to continue making tools that make your mapping easier, your life easier, as well as collaboration worldwide uh, more tight-knit than ever before. So thank you.